Police have accused a woman named Lindsay Clancy, a 32-year-old nurse from Massachusetts, of strangling her three young children to death just last month. After her husband Patrick left to pick up their dinner, Lindsay tied exercise bands around her kids' throats with enough pressure to eventually take their lives. She then cowardly jumped out of a second-story window to rid herself of the guilt. Doctors immediately pronounced that all three children were dead. However, Lindsay somehow survived the fall and is now left with the reality of what she has done. Now, it is important to understand that this was not a woman of sound mind. She had been suffering with postpartum depression and was heavily medicated at the time, which many believe is the sole cause of this tragic incident. Nevertheless, although Clancy is one of the most recent cases of a mother taking the lives of her own children, she is certainly not the first. As Megan Huntsman pleaded guilty in 2015 to suffocating six of her own babies right after giving birth to them from 1996 to 2006 in Pleasant Grove, Utah. She put their bodies into plastic bags, placed them in boxes and stored them in her garage where her husband unfortunately found them in 2014. Her family said that she had a history of drug and alcohol abuse, but this certainly isn't an excuse in my opinion. Before receiving a life sentence, she said in a statement to the court, she didn't feel strong enough to be a mother to these tiny babies, and in some small way, she wanted to avoid the terrible life that she would have given them. Megan Huntsman is currently imprisoned at Utah State Correctional Facility, but she isn't the only mother to blame her heinous acts on alcohol and drug abuse, as Susan Eubanks fatally shot her four sons, ages 4 to 14, execution style, outside her San Marcos, California home in 1997, after a night of drinking and taking drugs. She was arguing with her boyfriend at the time, and it is theorised that she shot her children in a spontaneous rage. She would later wound herself with a gunshot to her abdomen, in an attempt to frame somebody else for the murders. She was going through a divorce at the time, and the prosecutor said she killed the children to get back at the man who had broken her heart. In a note to her estranged husband, she wrote, You betrayed me. I've lost everybody I've loved. Now it's time for you to do the same. She was convicted of capital murder in 1999, and remains on death row. A similar fate which met Dora Buenrostro, after she fatally stabbed her three children in the neck in 1994. She was accused of planning the killings to frame her ex-husband, in a very similar situation to Susan Eubanks. Although there was clearly something lying under the surface, as this is obviously not the normal behaviour of a mother, she was nevertheless convicted of capital murder, and also remains on death row to this day. But unlike these women who tried to blame the murders on the children's fathers, Jeanette Michelle Hawes chose a very different route by blaming her actions on a demon. At the time of the murders, Jeanette had locked her three-year-old daughter and one-year-old son in a gas station restroom in 2007, and then proceeded to stab them both to death. She was described at her trial as suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, as she believed her children were possessed by demons. Hawes was found not guilty by reason of insanity in 2009, and sent to a state mental hospital, where she still resides to this day. And this is not too surprising, as paranoid schizophrenia seems to be a common theme when it comes to these matters, as in 2001, Andrea Yates also confessed to murdering her own children under very similar circumstances. However, she chose to drown her five children, ages six months to seven years, in the bathtub of her Houston, Texas home, one by one. She had a history of depression, postpartum psychosis, schizophrenia, and multiple suicide attempts, but due to her diagnosis, she was ultimately found not guilty by reason of insanity in 2006. After her initial arrest, she told a jail psychiatrist, my children were not righteous. I let them stumble. They were doomed to perish in the fires of hell, 
and so drowning them was her way of putting out the fire that was raging inside them. A horrendous way to die, which was a method also used by Susan Smith, who confessed to drowning her children in the car by rolling it into a lake. In 1994, Susan had told police that a man had stolen her car and abducted her two sons, ages 3 and 14 months, in South Carolina. It wasn't until later that the truth finally came out, and her motive was soon clear. Evidence showed that she was having an affair with her boss's son, but once things started to get serious, he broke things off. He explained that he wasn't interested in being a father, and as Susan had kids, their relationship would never be able to progress. So this act was not only brutal and callous, but also one of the most selfish motives I have ever heard. Rightfully so, she was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. The same fate that met Frances Newton, a Texas native who fatally shot her husband, 7-year-old son and 21-month-old daughter in 1987. She chose to blame their deaths on a drug dealer, but police soon found out that she had taken life insurance policies out on both her husband and daughter, which was established as the motive. Newton was convicted in 1988, but unlike Susan Smith, she was eventually executed in 2005 in her home state of Texas. So, as I'm sure you're aware, Texas is well known for some of the world's most brutal crimes, and this is certainly the same case when it comes to mothers taking the lives of their own children. As another Texan mother, 34-year-old Dina Schlosser, also killed her 11-month-old daughter in 2004, cutting off her arms with a knife while listening to gospel music in her home in Plano, Texas. She had a history of bipolar disorder, depression and postpartum psychosis, and when police found her, she was covered with blood, holding the knife, singing hymns and chanting, Thank you, Lord. Luckily, her two other daughters were not harmed, but nonetheless, Dina was found not guilty by reason of insanity, and in a very strange coincidence, Another deeply religious woman, similarly named Deanna, struck her sons, ages 8, 6, and 14 months, in the head with a large rock at her Texas home in 2003, instantly killing them. She too suffered from psychotic delusions, and in this particular case, there were surviving children once again, with the youngest child just about holding onto its life. A psychiatrist later testified at Deanna's trial, that she believed she had to kill her children as a test of faith, and so she was also found not guilty by reason of insanity and committed to a state mental hospital. However, unlike her counterpart, Dina Schlosser, Diana was eventually released in 2012, a fate which I can only hope doesn't meet possibly the most twisted murderous mother of all, Shemaya Hall. Now, unlike the other cases where mental disorders or mind-altering substance abuse played a large role in their motives, it would seem that Shemaya Hall's only intention in murdering three of her own children was to regain control over her family. A sick way of saying, if she can't have her kids, no one can. I actually covered her story in a previous video I made on Texas murders, so if you haven't already, make sure to check it out, as it also includes some other harrowing cases that still remain unsolved to this day.